Hi everyone, so today I'm going to make my own dust collector using this Home Depot pail. I think it was $4, but I actually used to use this as my shop vac, but actually my dad got me this for Christmas and it quite an upgrade, so I'm very excited. I've already used it, as you can see, it's kind of dusty already, but I want to protect the filter as long as possible, so I'm gonna make a dust collector. I've only had this for like a month and it already has so much dust in the filter and I kind of tried cleaning it before I started this video. The only thing I bought was this and I'm just going to use the hose attachments that came from this one, kind of cut them up and attach them to this and make my own dust collector. So I guess let's get started. So first of all, a dust collector is exactly what it sounds like. It collects sawdust and any other particles that you're vacuuming up. So first, you use a shop vac to suck up sawdust and other nasty particles that you don't want in your shop or in the air. And the shop vac has a filter inside that keeps the dust from being circulated back into the room. But over time, the filter gets filled with dust and the suction power reduces. So you'll have to replace your filter, which are typically around $20, which really adds up if you keep having to replace them. But if you use a dust collector, it collects a lot of your dust, prolonging the life of your filter. So how a dust collector works is first you attach a vacuum hose to the top of your dust collector so the suction source is coming from the top and there's also going to be another hose coming out the side of the bucket and that hose is lower than the top hose and it's directed towards the side of the bucket causing the sawdust to go around in circles and eventually go to the bottom of your bucket while the air is being sucked out the top. So when you turn on your vacuum, sawdust goes through this hole into your dust collector, the dust goes to the bottom of your bucket while the air continues to go into your vacuum. First is I'm going to make a hole in the top of this where the suction power is coming from. So I'm gonna drill a hole right here. So let's see how it fits. Nice, perfect. It's a nice tight fit. So I don't have to worry about gluing anything just so no air will escape, so it will be a really strong suction. Sweet! Halfway done with my dust collector. Now, this attachment came from this, and I'm not going to use this anymore, so I'm just going to take its pieces apart. And I'm going to use this, I'm going to put it in here, kind of sideways, and kind of angle it to the side so it creates that pattern that goes around and then the, all the sawdust goes to the bottom. So I'm going to drill a hole in the side over here and kind of angle it this way. There's my hole. So I got it in, but now I have to find a way to keep it so where it stays over here. So I'm using the small screw and screwing it through the side of the bucket into the hose. This is what it looks like when it's attached to the side. So I am a bit worried that this might be too small of a hole to create like a really good suction from here. So if that happens, I'll replace it with something with a wider mouth. So I'm gonna use this. I'm actually gonna tape this to here. I'm gonna cut off this end because I don't use this anymore. So just using an X-Acto knife. After I cut that apart, I used duct tape to attach the hose to the hose attachment. And then I used a hot glue gun and glued around the edges to make sure there was a complete seal and no air would get in or out. So actually, I think I'm done. Now for the fun part. So I just emptied this out so we know that there's not any sawdust. We're going to use this bucket of sawdust and we're going to see how effective this dust collector is. You see, this is also empty. So let's see how much sawdust goes in this instead of my shop vac. Look what it did. Wow. It has a lot of sawdust in it, but unfortunately means that this isn't a big enough mouth. So I'm going to have to take this off and come up with a new solution for this. <gasps> well, I definitely have a very strong shop back, but, but that means that my design isn't very good. So need to find another solution for this piece right here. Maybe I can just cut it. Let me think about it. I'll be back. I decided that I was going to get rid of the hose attachment and just use the hose. So I took out the screw, pulled it out, 
separated the hose from the hose attachment and then put the hose in and then screwed the hose to the side. Version two, <laughs> hopefully this will work. Okay, I'm gonna pour the sawdust back into this bucket. Oh, well, that wasn't smart. Take two. Wow, so apparently that's not even good enough. As you can see, there's a lot of sawdust, so the system works itself. It's just the rate that this vacuum is sucking is not at the same rate as air is sucking into this one, therefore making the whole thing contract. This one's almost like twice the diameter of this one. So I'm gonna, instead of trying to change this one again, I'm actually gonna see if using an adapter to make this half the diameter. So I'm gonna use this and see if that will help. It didn't. Well, at least this is a good problem to have. Means I have a really good shop back. I guess I'm just gonna have to go to Home Depot to get a new hose. And California is quarantined, so I can't. So I guess I'm actually just gonna put this project on hold, wait until the quarantine in California is over. So, bye for now. I am back. It's been like a month or two, but I got new materials. I got this and this sells at Home Depot. It was $5 per foot and I got three feet, so it's $15. And it's the same size as this. It is one and one half inch wide. Um, and they cut it right there for you. Honestly, I don't even remember where I left off because it's been so long, but I'm gonna start by isolating the problem. First, I need to take this apart. See if it still compresses when I just put this in and I put that in. So seeing if the hole in general is too small or if it was a hose thing. It's not the hole. It was the hose, I guess. It was too small. So now I'm gonna attach this. So I have to make the hole bigger first and because I already made a hole in it, my drill had nowhere to grab onto so my drill was kind of going all over the place. But I actually found that the easiest way to cut into this plastic material was using a utility knife so I kind of just slightly made the hole bigger and bigger. I'm going to put my hose in now. So I got the hose in, screwed the hose to the side of the bucket, and then used hot glue to make sure there was a complete seal around the edges and now I can try it out. I have a full bucket of sawdust. And this is empty. So, and same with this, I'm gonna give it a try. Yeah, definitely a lot, of, a lot of sawdust in there. Let's see how much is in here. And there's barely anything. There's a little bit of fine dust, but I'd say that's pretty good. Sweet. So, I'd say that that was a success. There's barely any dust in there. So we know that it works now. And I can stop here, but pretty much all of my power tools, my sanders, my saws, my table saw, um, this adapter goes up to them. So I am gonna try and see if this works. We know that pretty much that this one didn't work because it's smaller. And so the rate of suction from this was greater than this, causing this to compress. So hopefully if I add this, it doesn't do that again, but we'll see. And this size is actually perfect where it's a tight fit, so it's sealed. So let's try it out. super excited because I found a solution. So I looked on YouTube and I was looking for solutions and I found the solution that is genius. So I'll link his video down below. I'm gonna be making a pressure release valve. And to do that, I'm gonna drill a hole in the top, but 
it's gonna be covered for the most part. But when there's too much pressure, it'll, it'll start compressing and that hole will be uncovered because the pressure will cause the valve to open. And this solution is perfect because if I just drill holes in the top, it's really taking away from the suction power from my machine, but it allows release if it's causing my bucket to compress. So I'm very excited about this. So let's try it out. So this is random stuff I found around the house that will work. So I'm gonna need string. I, some metal flat surface. This is from a candle and an old jar, a metal jar and a magnet. And then pretty much something for the top part, which is anything that won't fit through the hole. So maybe a pen, a paintbrush, this. Maybe this, maybe this. <laughs> Pretty much, I just grabbed a whole bunch of random stuff around my house and we'll see what will work. So the idea behind this is pretty much there'll be a magnet that will stick to your flat surface. I'm gonna use this hole as an example. I'll glue the magnet to a paintbrush or anything that stays above the surface that won't fall through the hole. And when there's enough pressure pulling in, the magnet will let go and this will fall in and allow for air to get in this way. So I'm super excited about this. We'll try out a couple different things and see what works. All right, first I'm gonna drill a hole. I'm starting with um, half an inch drill bit. So this is my little hole. You can see this is my magnet. It's right there and my old metal jar. So I'm gonna put it, the magnet through there. And so now we just need to attach something to make sure that this magnet stays up here. So huh, technically this works without even, this is metal, so technically that works. I'm actually gonna just see if this hole is big enough in general. So we're gonna put it through the test without covering the hole and see if my bucket collapses at all. It still collapsed a bit, but that means we just make the hole a little bit bigger. Once again, I'm using this to just make the hole a bit bigger. <laughs> that looks so bad. <laughs> it looks really bad, but I don't care. And you're curious what size the hole is, it's around, that's a little bit bigger than three fourths. I'm gonna try this again. We good, I don't think it compressed at all. So I think this is a good size. Now we get to make our release valve. So my hot glue is warm now. This is what I'm using and so this will go on the bottom. First, I'm gonna glue a string to the lid and to the side of here so that when it does fall off, it doesn't fall into the pile of sawdust and I have to go digging through it. So I glued the string to the metal lid and to the top of the bucket. So now when, it, when this comes off, it hangs there instead of falling into my pile of dust. So I'm just gonna put that right there and then that on top so the hole is covered. I've got my bucket of sawdust. Okay, let's see if it works. So my top part flipped sideways and fell in. So, but it, but it works though. So I glued this to the top so it won't ever fall in on accident. And here you can see up close what it looks like and how it works. So if the pressure is too big and causing the bucket to compress, the pressure will pull in the metal lid, causing the valve to open. So let's try it out again. Wow. <laughs> I'm impatient. So I didn't let it dry all the way and now there's sawdust completely stuck to my glue bit whatever but that worked I feel like I probably should have, should have been wearing a face mask this whole time it came undone almost immediately and I'm wondering if that's because of the suction of the vacuum or if that's just because the actual pressure was too great like if there wasn't a problem at all and it just automatically came off because the magnets aren't strong enough 
or if there actually was a problem and it was doing its job. So I guess I'm gonna try and leave it in place and without sucking anything and see if it comes off. Woo! So it's not just the suction of the vacuum that's making it fall, it's actually when there is a problem, it falls. So my system works. I'm actually, I'm so happy with this. I think this idea was genius and I'll link that video down below. My desk collector is completely done. I'm super happy with it that I actually had a lot of fun playing with this valve release. Yeah, thank you guys for watching and hope you enjoyed. And like and subscribe if you did. I have lots of other videos on woodworking and interior design and I don't know, whatever I really am feeling like posting. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time.